not Jack be nimble, or Jack Spat, or little Jack Horner. He was just plain Jack. Now Jack lived with his mother in a very small house. The clothes they wore were old and tattered, and they hardly ever had enough to eat. You see, Jack and his mother were very poor. Oh, Jack, what are we going to do? Oh, don't worry. Things will get better, Mother. You'll see. What little food they had left was almost gone. Jack's mother decided there was nothing left to do but sell their cow, Nelly. Oh, no. We can't sell Nelly. I'm sorry, Jack. There's nothing else we can do. Take Nelly to the market and sell her for as much money as you can. We'll use the money to buy more food. Oh, all right, Mother. Uh -uh. So that morning, Jack led Nelly down the dusty road to town. On his way, Jack met a peddler. Hello there. On your way to market, are you? Yes, sir. I have to sell our cow so we can buy food. We're very poor. Yes, you do look a little thin. And so does that cow. <laughs> but maybe I can save you a trip to town. I'll tell you what I'll do. The peddler offered to buy Nelly the cow for five magic beans. Magic beans? Absolutely, my boy. They're far more valuable than that scrawny cow. Well, okay. So Jack returned home with the beans, certain he had made a very good trade. But when Jack told his mother what he had done, she became very upset. Uh -uh. Magic beans? You sold our Nelly for beans? You foolish boy! Now we have nothing left! But, Mother, they're magic! Jack, I've had enough of your foolish magic! Jack's mother threw the beans out the window and sent Jack to his room. I'm sorry, Mother. There now, Jack. It's all right. We'll make do somehow. Jack lay in his bed. He really wanted the beans to be magic. Jack was always telling his mother stories about magic things. Oh, if only those beans could have been magic. Uh -uh. Magic beans that 
never go away. Jack got his mother and showed her what had happened to the beans. You see, Mother, I told you the beans were magic. Goodness, you were right, Jack. I've never seen anything quite like it. As Jack and his mother looked up, they couldn't even see the top of the beanstalk. It had grown right up through the clouds. Jack was so excited that he started to climb up the stalk. Oh, Jack, you be careful. Don't worry, Mother. Uh-uh. Jack climbed and climbed higher and higher. He could see all over the countryside. You know, Mother was right. I'd better be careful. It's a long way down. Higher and higher he climbed until Jack climbed right up through the clouds. The top of the clouds was like another land. Gosh, what is this place? As Jack got off the beanstalk and started to look around, he noticed a road that led off into the distance. A road? I wonder where it goes. Jack started to follow the road. It led him over a hill and into a valley. In the valley, there was a castle. The largest castle that Jack had ever seen. Jack walked right up to the castle and its enormous wooden door. Whoever lives here must be really big. I wonder who it is. Well, there's only one way to find out. Jack knocked on the door. Hello? Is anyone home? Come in. From inside the castle came a tiny voice inviting Jack to enter. All right. Jack was barely able to reach the door handle. He unlatched the handle and pushed the door open. Uh -uh. Inside, there was a very large room with very large furniture. Jack looked around the room, but there was no one there. Hello? Who said to come in? I did. Uh, over here. Jack heard the tiny voice again. It was coming from a little orange hen. The hen was locked up in a cage that sat on a large chest. Oh, will you please set me free? A chicken that talks? I've never seen a chicken that could talk before. Are you magic? The hen wanted Jack to let her out of the cage. Jack could not believe that the hen was actually talking. You see, there are some people who are surprised when they see birds that can speak. <laughs> Silly, isn't it? Oh, please set me free. Well, who do you belong to? I don't belong to anyone. The giant who lives here locked me up. The, the giant? Yes, the giant. Please set me free before he returns. The hen explained that she had been captured by the giant who owned the castle. Suddenly, Jack heard loud footsteps from outside. What's that? Oh, it's the giant. You better hide. If the giant finds you here, he's so angry. Have you ever seen a giant when he's angry? He's awful. Uh-oh! The little hen had no trouble convincing Jack that he should not let the giant find him in the castle. Jack hid behind the large chest. Just as the giant opened the door. Uh, uh. Oh my! The giant was monstrous. He was at least twice as big as any man Jack had ever seen before. Jack was very frightened and hid behind the chest. The giant picked up the cage that held the hen and put it on his table. Well, hello, my little chicken. Have you missed me? <laughs> How would you like to lay some more golden eggs for me? No, I won't. You set me free. The giant told the hen that if she didn't lay golden eggs for him, he would cook her for his dinner. The poor little hen knew that the giant meant what he said, and she did her best to lay an egg. Oh, good. I knew you could do it. <laughs> A nice, solid, gold egg. Jack could not believe his eyes. The hen had laid a real golden egg. Now lay another golden egg for me. Very good. Nice, shiny gold. Now lay another. I can't. Oh, yes, you can. The giant opened the cage 
just a bit now, my little hen, before you lay some more eggs. <laughs> Be 
the little orange hen were very happy. With the golden egg, they had plenty of money to buy food and clothes. And they shared their wealth with all who were less fortunate than they were. And they even 